scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Can we read together? Do we have Amplified? Amplified, please. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's read together. One to read. One more time. There is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But the end of it is the way of death. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to the things of the spirit empower us by light in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah um, I began to think and meditate on the things that I'll be sharing and the Lord began to reveal to me how that if we stay on course please listen if we stay on course with spiritual things and the things we are hearing, the things we are listening to. The Lord again began to give me an assurance that there is a height He's taking us in the Spirit. And that that height will not come in one day, but that line upon line, precept upon precept. If we will be faithful enough to allow the light of God finish its work in our lives, you know, one of the things that we suffer a lot in the body of Christ is impatience. Everyone say impatience. We want everything to happen sharp, sharp. We want anointing sharp, sharp. We want insight sharp, sharp. We want to have all the revelations of the kingdom. You want to listen to all the koinonia messages and receive all of the impartations at once you want all of the prosperity and the blessings to just come at once except for the fact that that's not how spiritual things work hallelujah god does not throw people up he lifts people and it's a process when he lifts you he sustains you by knowledge hallelujah praise the lord so it's not just enough to be lifted you will come down but when he raises you up and then he keeps you in a place of stability. No power in existence can bring you down. Hallelujah. One of the things that I really thought about. Um, I thought about a lot of things. But one of them that struck a chord in my spirit. And that will be the foundation of our teaching tonight. I will be very brief and then we'll pray. You know, over the last few weeks, I've been challenging our convictions. Praise the Lord. Those of us who have been consistent for a while, you know that I have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them. Transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new that is sustainable and is able to take you to the place where God wants you to go it's not enough that we have 
a prophetic destiny in Christ. It's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. Like the lovely lady there shared that she knew that there was a place, there was a, a prophetic destiny for her life. But knowing it, brothers and sisters, is not enough. You must know how to get there and what it takes to get there. And then you must commit yourself and this is one of the major problems with the body of Christ. We teach a lot about where we are going and where God is taking us and the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us and that is not a lie except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are to that prophetic destiny they will be frustrated with time. The Bible says hope that is deferred can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals. But to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane. And if you subject yourself to these teachings, listen to me, listen to me. If you subject yourself to the truths you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly, wholly. The Bible says how that Joshua followed the Lord wholly. Was it Caleb? The Lord wholly, not half-hearted. There are many of us who, um, we love the Lord, but we are not really convinced about spiritual things hallelujah so our perception about spiritual things are just on the average you are not extreme you are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things so you can bend when you hear anything else but the bible says be steadfast be immovable hallelujah you must be rooted in something listen let me tell you something. If you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality, then don't keep quiet about it. Probe what you've heard. And if you think it is not consistent with the word of God, throw it away. Do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of God for the purpose of solidarity not because it is a revelation we plan to apply hallelujah probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it is that true if you were left all to yourself you would not agree with some of those things why deceive yourself kick away anything your spirit does not agree with and you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about. Are you getting my point? There is no point standing for nothing. If you don't believe in prosperity, don't behave and pretend like you believe it. Probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it. If you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, see, it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd Whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong. Because in the end of it, you will not get any results. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. So, it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of God. The question is, are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe? And hold on to that in the secret place where no one is watching you, you know that this is still my conviction. Hallelujah. I say this because there are many of us in the past, maybe three, four, five years, your spiritual life has not been stable. It's been a journey like a pendulum. Right now, you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again. I heard a lady send me a text and said, honestly, since I graduated, let me tell you sincerely. I went to a church and I'm serving under that church and I've sat under that teaching for three, two, three months or thereabout. 
and right now I don't even know what I should believe again. If that becomes your testimony, you will be angry in the future because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place. There are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country, they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic, as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are, they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass. And they run People give towards those ideologies. People give their lives towards those ideologies. What do you believe? What can you stand for? About God, about your life, about your destiny. Are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of God's life? We just hop around anything that looks like the truth. So you travel back home and you hear something else. And then you stop praying in tongues. And you say this thing, based on what I've had now, I'm not really sure. It doesn't make sense. Let me stop. And then you come back and you are refired. And then you are praying. And then tomorrow it's easy for you to bribe. And then later on you say, Kite, I need to repent. Where do you stand? See, the Bible says, I wish that thou art hot or cold. You are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. He said, as a result, I will spew you out of my mouth. You must stand for something. You must stand for an ideology. You must stand for a dimension of truth. It's like marriage. You cannot marry every woman. Is that true? You cannot marry every man. So you see a pretty lady right now and say, ah, where have you been? If I saw you, I would not ask Rose out. And then the next thing you see another person and say, you see, that's how many of us are. There is a lot of spiritual harlotry. And at the end of it, we are infected with all kinds of viruses. Nothing stands. So you used to pray and fast, but you had something. And right now, you don't even see a need for it again. Then you hear another message and you are now confused. So believers are swinging like pendulums. If your life must move forward, you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you something. I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives. And I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say, our focus now is holiness. And then later on, they say, our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So, we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did. Because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it. You cannot find it. Because what you have held on to is not working. Listen. We are going to pray in one minute. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Pray for one minute. I am communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? 
Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today and we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it proximity is not the same as connectivity that you are close to an anointing that you are close to a revelation does not mean it will become part of your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives that you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married and that commitment you are so ashamed of it is that true? To an extent that when you hear people talking and they say, how about you? So who is for this weekend? You just laugh. And then you feel to say, no, 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 no. I, I, this is not my ideology. It is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come. Hallelujah. Every great man is fanatic about something. And if you must ever experience greatness, especially in the spirit, you must have something you are convinced about. And you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions. Very interesting scripture. The Bible says, can we have that scripture again? There is a way that what? seems right seems right unto a man and appears straight the road is not straight <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing it is a straight road hallelujah like a drunkard when a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer he can see this door right here is that true Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas 
about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God, about rapture, about the coming of Christ, about Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work. There are those who believe that working is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not working, you are not yet a man or a woman. You are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours, 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much every subject that we had to study, we took it very seriously. And um, I did fine arts. And one of the things that, that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives. Right? Perspectives. It was a very interesting subject for me. Because when we were being taught that um, lesson, we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing. Is that true? And they called it what? Perspectives. And so when we were giving assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life. And everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside, we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. 
And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it, my goodness, you would think Koinonia has been held in a stadium. Perspectives. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase. Are you getting me? And a good life and a great life and from his perspective, that is all there is to the Christian experience. Are you getting me? And then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood. It can cost you your life. This is their perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? And to them, it may not interest them so much when you are teaching. This guy here is teaching, I have come that you may have life. Is that true? And have life more abundantly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. Whereas another person, looking at the same truth from another perspective, begins to speak and say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If it will cost me my life, so be it. Yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective, he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven. There is a fight and this is his perspective. Now the trouble starts, hear me, when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective. You see where error begins to come in. When we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here. This is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others. Watch this. That this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says there is a way. Everybody said there is a way. 
Now the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life. This is why you find out, have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries at different churches? Have you seen the commotion that happens there? During things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something. Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels, there are, there are many. They are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. He was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Oh. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, calm down. Ah! Calm down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, How are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? 
Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else. There are others who read it and nothing happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Please say it, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way. Not any prophet. Not any apostle. Not any teacher. Not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men, you will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life. No matter how nice it sounds. There is something you can hear. No matter how ugly it sounds. It will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear. That will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear. That will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. <laughs> Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. 
He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument, as powerful as they were, they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now... One day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why, you see, brothers and sisters, it's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage, it's a privileged position. Not everybody is daft spiritually. Pastors, never forget this. When you stand, there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. it says, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual. On that fateful day, there were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla. And they kept quiet. Worship team sang. And the guy wore suit. He came up. And he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth are you getting my point now the bible says when they had what happened they took him like a boy ha ah, amazing see come this is this is apollos smart guy turn sharp guy this guy had been preaching divine healing is possible blah 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 and true true one headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try but there were areas of lapses, areas of excesses, areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha, maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become a
acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. Boy, could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone are you hearing me that there are times that if need be you may have to die for your convictions if you open your heart to that dimension then you can enjoy the blessings of god buy all the flashy cars buy great houses but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant your christian experience becomes more perfect are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Hmm. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness rulers spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant Christian it makes your Christian experience richer are you hearing what I'm saying and it is for this cause Ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion. Listen, please. That he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens. Verse 10, verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some perspectives he gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs. But they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there if you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up there are people like that there are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life just locate them you're not going to hear any revelation i traveled somewhere and while i was there it was it was a, a, a conference 
and there were lots of prophets there hallelujah and i was amazed to see how these guys their understanding of the word was so little you know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny not it's not an insult i'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was but my goodness my goodness these people these people zeroed down the prophetic it was almost prophecy but at will i've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people but i'm not called into the prophetic office the grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you so for me i know that to prophesy it must happen with fasting and prayer it's not a gift for me i don't look at you now and say except i'm lying you see that if it's to tell a lie it's a very simple thing i can just say you there are things going wrong with your life of course that's a very easy way to lie <laughs> hallelujah so if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the holy spirit it's not a luxury for me that's why the few times it comes i cherish it sincerely he gave on to some apostles he gave on to some prophets he gave on to some evangelists he gave on to some pastors he gave on to some teachers so that the the full picture verse 12 why did he give all these things for what the bible says apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly and the bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints comma so that they the saints will do the work of the ministry to the end that verse 13 till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature let me tell you something every man of god that truly knows god knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of god and he's not embarrassed by that reality that's why i get you never there are some things you never hear in koinonia here oh god of koinonia oh god of joshua selman arise for me i'm not saying ministries that say god of this god of that there's there's anything wrong i'm just saying that if you if you don't take care that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the lord to idolatry are you getting what i'm saying there are believers in the body of christ today they have seen the truth they have seen it they know that this is truth but their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like apollos to be humble the bible says there is a way that seemeth right it's amazing that there are still christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually they will have enough money to fund a ministry they will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel, but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? 
What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is. They just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who will never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh and his message. So please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access there are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then... Now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> For me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I will not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen. Listen. If you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries. They cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment. There are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. 
People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, not, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen. Yet, stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God, don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away, and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the, dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality. See, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me. If I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong, even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down, kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me, and you ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is, it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinching or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me, is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16, they know you have not been you have not been following because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month 
that we, this memory you see is not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house and then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? For now. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And I said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we are busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not. You go home straight there. You are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call. You know how the Bible says it. Rebuke one, then call another. L. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to. Anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this. No. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. 
But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter tight. And the reason is that you have been a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. It's still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God. Mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy. Very short guy. My goodness. Look. That guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And, and if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with IK, we traveled... Two years or so ago. While we're ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be set in the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, 
you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day, but God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. And you say, when you, are free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away. Based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people. Where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet, David danced. Yet, it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God, I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, I'd rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. 
you must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality, I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach and I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me, scared me in a way that I said, ah! And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you, but God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who have people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart. The, it will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samade and me. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass 
has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, now nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you. Lay hands on this sick body. And you say no Kai. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change.
change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to it's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual we love things happening normally let it be happening the way i have always known it and the moment i see another perspective then it is not of god it is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up it is not done this way it is not done this way i've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage putting a little place like this to honor the man of god and guests is carnal everybody's one before god and in those churches when the pastor comes he can sit anywhere once it's time for someone he can come out it is lack of excellence yet it may not be embraced as thus it may be termed spirituality god is speaking to you could it be that if you embrace a dimension of god you would have passed the interview you entered the interview as a man of god not i as an employable person praise the lord you didn't dress well because you felt the holy ghost is with me and you entered the people were looking at you young man keep quiet i can't keep quiet this is what i believe because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around, you are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God it convinces you that god is with you you do not know that it is a dimension of god's mercy speaking to you samson said i will arise as before and all of a sudden he found out that is here he said you have been weighed O king in the balance god weighs men oh he won't weigh you in one day he will keep weighing you you be... that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lamb stand has been taken let me tell you god can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person may god not take your position and give another saul was still in the palace Whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, meet, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. 
I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems. I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us. And then I listened to an apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. And he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry. He said, never try to do to people what only God can do to them. Deliverance. That was it. I learned how to sleep soundly. Because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once. It was getting too much. Everybody would call at every time. I became a receptionist. Hundreds of phone calls, like every 30 minutes, someone is calling and the person can cry for 50. I was wearing out, literally. And then the Lord said, why don't you put something like that? Some of you are in that thing right now. You, have, you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan Bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us. You are spiritual. But if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp. No. I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels, there are dimensions in the spirit I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth. Of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit. To all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up. To the dimensions of the spirit. That are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are, you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. 
I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction. Divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now that if a prophet, a genuine prophet of God would enter here right now and have a one-on-one -on -one session with us and say by the grace of God, I will talk with you one on one and let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? All that. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something, it is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer, you will struggle, nothing will work. When you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure which many times is limited i need divine direction because if god does not direct me i can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia i can look out and say wow there's a crowd inside and outside i'm comfortable i'm comfortable it's okay nothing more Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. 
he said be sure that your light is not darkness that means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you're walking in illumination whereas you're walking in darkness the light of the body is the eye therefore when thy eye is single thy whole body is full of light but when thy eye is evil your body is also full of darkness 35 there's a warning for us everyone read want to read take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness that means you can be making decision based on a truth you think you know whereas it's wrong hallelujah for instance i will never marry a man who is rich who is not rich for instance I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that is darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not. Listen. Listen it's not an insult look up please i want to teach you this about life please and please do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything are you hearing me do not even if you are a celebrity do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything every time i see our daddy come and sit down here i am very humbled by his humility Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited no matter how prophetic you think you are no matter how apostolic you think you are many times when i cry before god i say lord help this small boy if you don't help me i will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid that's how i cry before god i'm not insulting myself i know it's the truth 
and I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing, but God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be honored, where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members who just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for God to direct you I'll never forget I was rejoicing the year we we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start I was so happy because I was saying Lord my, share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and i've come to a point where i don't give god if god says stay in zaria forever i stay in zaria forever I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us. We will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God says, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners. So God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. 
So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. It says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters, dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt they were forewarned. Genesis 41. Don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings. The Bible says God came to him in a dream. And he received an impartation. And God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10. They all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is that? Ananias in a dream. In a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul. He's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking. And I was sharing with him about something. And while I was talking, to me, it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling. When I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them. I'm wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. 
A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension wisdom the last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray in 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8, from verse 7 to 15, I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so, so that our time is gone. I mean, this project this one now. 2 Kings 8, verse 7 to 15. is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and ben Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick and it was told him, saying, the man of God is come. Hit our next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant, take a present in thy hand See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed? And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord saying, Shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him even of every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria has sent me to thee saying shall I recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and Elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of God thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it the Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says... He settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? 
And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their stronghold shall thou set on fire. And their young men will thou slay with the sword. And thou will dash their children and rip up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, the Lord had shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry. A, I'm joking. No? You are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry. And in 24 hours, it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sent the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he is saying now. Listen, God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry, but his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out, could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying, it proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen. It's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen. If God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. 
Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on its own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rhema that the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11 from verse 27 to 30, that's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet, prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. Prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one. Many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great death famine throughout the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated. And one time we got talking and I said, look, young man, listen. 
you do the job. The job he was doing, he was teaching in one school. Guess his salary, 5,000 naira per month. And if you don't come to teach the students, they will still deduct something from it. I told him, remain there. He's teaching you discipline. He's teaching you submission. God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. You say, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home where did it go to say it's still there oh, but i i found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it i said really wisdom from experience could it be that this is a revelation for someone you finish school you've done everything for one year you did not get a job people think you don't have faith god is teaching you the art of waiting it will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly, you are virtuous. Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God he says, oh, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah, but the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. God cannot be joking with you. Anytime you take your Bible, I told God, my life and this ministry will be a demonstration of the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Sir King Salama. Salama. He's called the Prince of Peace. Hey, hey, hey. Salama. Yeah. Hallelujah. Leave her alone. Be still. Stand in one place now. Sir King Salama. Your time in this body is over. Your time in this body is over. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. Out of her now. Come out of her. Out of her. Sir King Salama. Out. Come out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. He maketh his angels, spirits, and his ministers flames. Leave her now. She's free. Sarkin Salama 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 Salama
Hallelujah. Your time is up. This is Koinonia. The mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Out of her. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Listen. Listen. The Lord is showing me an arrow coming from outside this country. This is what affected this boy. This thing has tied this gentleman's life. Leave him. Leave him. Come back here. Come back here. Now. Sorry, everybody. Come back here. Many of you, listen. Many of you do not know that wickedness is real. You have allowed films to, to, to spoil your mind. If you don't take, I tell you, whatever is stopping, one of the things I will be doing tonight is breaking the curse of marital delay. Oh, the devil, it will answer tonight. Look at, it's already happening. Come out! Come out! This guy has a violent spirit. A violent spirit. The mighty name of Jesus. Every lecker hole you have over this body. I challenge you right now. You will leave him. The fire of God is against you. It's time for you to go out. Out of him. Out. Shall the captives be delivered and the prey be taken from the mighty. But thus saith the Lord. Let her go right now. Thou foul devil. Come out. Come out. So pray take a pariada baladala. Sarkin salama. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what the Lord is showing me about this gentleman. This guy, listen, listen, please. This guy has a very, very colorful destiny. But do you know what I just saw? From his head to his toe. How many of you have read the story of Lazarus? That's what I saw. And he was tied with snakes from his head to his toe. This is what I'm seeing right now. See, do you know that the challenges many of you are going through is not ordinary? It's because nobody has told you. But tonight there is a God to set you free. This is spirit husband. This is what is stopping this lady from getting married. Out. Come out of her. Out now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your time is over. I'm seeing an army officer. I'm army officer. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Shekataba. Brentoko Prikata. Out of her right now. This is the spirit of lust. Go prosketaliada. Be gone. There is no hiding. I tell you something. See, the mistake the devil made was to allow you come in here tonight. I don't care whether you are wherever. If you came here tonight, if except God lied to us in the Bible. But if he told us the truth, there will be a performance in your life tonight. Sirkin Salama. Come out. Out of her right now. Salama. Salama. Listen, let me tell you what happens in meetings like this. Some of you, because of this demon spirit, the one to start pushing you to go out or to run away, you, you better stay and let God help you. The devil is a liar tonight. Are you listening to me? Okay, I didn't finish with this guy. Watch what will happen to this brother. 
He's not looking at me. Oh. He's not looking at me. Just calm down. Stay in one place. I'm not speaking to him. Don't, don't worry. Stay in one place. You can't go anywhere. You come here. This is a, the head of a snake I'm seeing. Right to his foot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fire of the Holy Ghost sets you free right now from your head to your toe. I lose you. I lose you. He's going to cough out something outside. Take him outside. He's going to go and cough out something. Sarkin Salama 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 Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Devil of darkness. Sarkin Salama Salama There's someone that has a problem, a heart problem, heart problem. That was your request, heart, something in your heart. I don't know what it is. The Lord is showing me. Please remember I told you don't waste our time. Please. There's a lot of things we have to do this night. Heart. Something pertaining to your heart. If you are still thinking about it, you are not the person. Please, quickly. Salama, yeah. Salama. Salama, yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. See, there is a lady. Now, don't feel embarrassed at what I'm about to say. You see snakes in your bathroom. Ladies bathroom. Who is that person? Come out. Come out. This has been an issue. You have not shared it with people. Snakes. You are you see it. Who is the person? Please. Salama. Salama. Yeah. You are not the only one, no. You are not the only one. This is the problem. God, God is ready to deliver you. Look, this is a family. Are you listening to me? This is not. Th this is an apostolic ministry. So there is. We are here. We are a family. When God is mentioning your case, forget about what, what issue of shame. Issue of shame is out of the way. Hallelujah. What's wrong with your heart? Asthma. Asthma. Is asthma really a heart? This one, I'm seeing a heart problem. But I'll pray for you. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Listen. I'm going to pray for you people. God is doing Come out of her now. Out. Come out of her now. Devil of darkness. Your time is up. Just hold my hands with both of your hands. The fire of God will hold it as tight as you can. It cannot stand, it will leave you because you are destined for greatness. Once I see it in the spirit, it must go, for light cannot hide in darkness. Aha, I see you now. Out! Go! Go! Kapotoka! Reketaria! Mamproskote! Reketeria daba! Boseketalia! Out! Come out of her! Out of her right now! Sarkin Salama! Look at me. Two things God is doing. Hold my hands. Hold it. Do you believe? You want God to set you free? Sarki Salama. Look at my eyes. You just look at my eyes. Try to look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Devil of darkness. Go! There is no hiding. 
for there is a name that is above every other name what did she come out for the same thing why were you afraid don't be afraid eh? you hear hold my hands hold my hands both of your hands look at me can you shout Jesus as loud as you can go ahead Salama, you are free. Salama, yeah. Salama. Salama, yeah. Be delivered right now. I set you free. Now, do you know what is happening to this lady? If I tell you, some of you will not believe. For every shout that she's making, is demons that are going. When she's done, she'll be quiet. <laughs> now, leave her. Fire upon you right now. Out of her. This lady has a great destiny. This is a snake. This is what I'm seeing. This is a whole snake. Mighty snake. The Lord is against you. Let her go now. Out! In the name that is above all names. Hold my hands, my dear. Hold my hands. No, I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. Come, hold my hands. I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. You people do not understand spiritual things. You are spiritual people here. Come, hold my hands. The demon knows what it means, what I'm saying. Salama, yeah. Salama. Hurry up, please save our time. We, we don't have much time. Salama. Hold my hands. Don't tap it. Hold it. Out now. Salama. Yeah, yeah. Salama. Watch the way this demon will live. Come. See. Listen. You will go on your knees. You will bow to the king of kings and go. Simple. You will go on your knees, bow to the king, and off you go. Serkin Salama 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 yeah. Listen This is not jamboree As I see my father do it Don't go and try it You will die for nothing This is not child's play Hallelujah Don't you think we are just No I'm not one of those ministers I can't come and waste your time God is too serious Are you listening to me? Now lift your hands Many of you do not know. Listen. Please, now is the time to stand both for yourself. If you are a lady here, there is no reason why you should not be lifting your hands. Marriage is a blessing. It's not a curse. As I, as I talk, as I talk, because you see, I, I see a sword of fire leaving my mouth. I want to break certain demonic things many of you don't know what is stopping you and your loved ones for some of you is a role in your family many people have told you nothing just just hope one day no 
we don't do that nonsense in this place now faith is lift your hands hallelujah listen the moment we shout the name Jesus some of you listen you will testify whatever is happening to you here will locate all your loved ones around listen the reason is because there are ordinances of darkness that are keeping some of you your parents took you to places in the name of protection and that devil will not let you go the Lord instructed me to do this hallelujah if you are here or your loved ones there has been delay men come they go or maybe you have a child and you're thinking you will not marry that devil is a liar this night are you listening to me so don't just stand for yourself alone don't say it does not concern me don't be foolish hallelujah are you ready now you will see the demonstration of the power of the spirit Kai, because see i'm seeing blood i'm seeing blood dripping on the ground let me tell you what this means there are covenants and ordinances this is what the lord is showing me but my bible says the blood of jesus speaketh better things better things at the shout of the name jesus the demons responsible for any marital delay god you said if i speak it you will do it right now at the count of three it will hit some of you in a mighty way inside and outside lord let nobody be spared one two three Shall bring them out. Break, 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 the yoke be broken, the yoke be broken, the yoke, I release you, I release you, I release you, I release you. of marriage over your family tonight be free be free be free don't don't take at her don't take at her time to get married hey bring them out don't wait till you come out the power of god is setting you free where you are yes 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 ordinances i'm seeing altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire i set them if i be a servant of god right now i set every demonic altar on fire It will burn tonight. Hopo tokoto, reke tokoto pre, so pre tokoto, sheke pre kana, eko skote, reke te pre, sheke te, altas, altas. I release you. I release your family. I release you inside and outside. I release you. I release you into your marital destiny. The curse is lifted. 
I release your sisters. I release your brothers. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release you. I release you. I release you. Just receive. I release you. I release you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I got a text from someone. I mean, they brought someone who was sick. Who was that person? I can't remember now. A sick person. No, they sent, I remember they sent me a text that they would bring the sick person. Please save our time for God's sake. We're still going to minister to the sick. Hallelujah. Let that lady go free. Now, devil, let her go free now. Let her go free. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Let her go free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Everybody say, I receive. Yes, it's happening to you. Now, please listen. I want to pray for terminal diseases terminal diseases all kinds of terminal diseases please you brought someone or you came here with a terminal disease come out quickly terminal only terminal diseases please let's save time can we do that god is locating people there are some of you god god is already terminal diseases please come out quickly 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 i beg you if you can run run save time please please as you come out here say lord it comes i hope you know what terminal diseases are healing rain healing cry rain unto god wave that sickness I'm bye bye because it's going forever i'm not afraid of time listen can you just hold your hands together if you can I'll just minister to you at once please if you came here believing God then know that it will end hallelujah there is an angel standing here and there is an angel of the Lord standing here please listen when we begin to minister to the sick if we call a case and you came with the person please make sure you come especially if the person cannot speak English for our mothers so that we can hurry up okay the power of God will come upon some of you but it really doesn't matter that devil is going right now 
the spirit is called the spirit of infirmity hallelujah after a country you will say i am healed when that happens it's like electricity it will pass with power all around this place are you ready now one two three go Porto. be free go 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 coming out this is go 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 by the fire of the holy ghost go 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 come back with testimonies come back with the testimony by the fire of the holy ghost come back with the testimony 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 i speak to you all of you come back with a testimony come back with a testimony hallelujah say i'm healed go back to your seats you can check yourselves please make sure you check yourself go to the hospital if you need i know someone with hiv was healed anyone who has been anyone with any cg see the power of god is is breaking from inside some of you are outside here you are not receiving people inside are receiving and they are leaving you listen anyone with any academic issue the senate has refused to answer between now and the next 14 days i command them to answer anyone who is at the verge of probation listen anyone at the verge of probation i pick you from where you are and i bring you back as a student in this school hallelujah thank you jesus i want to pray for you any cause you did not fail listen see believe oh, any cause you did not fail but you went to the board and you saw f i change it i said i change it i change it kato i change it hallelujah any man i don't care who who is molesting and oppressing people in every in any department or any faculty whether supervisor or whoever i instruct them to begin to favor you now <laughs> hallelujah now listen carefully those inside can you hear me can you hear me i'm standing out because I want those outside to appreciate this meeting now i'm going to pray for you some of you i'm seeing chains on the heads of we are dealing with academic issues now hallelujah listen i want you to lift your hands many of you will feel like fire burning your head if that wait i'm going to count three when that happens to you listen this one will affect a lot of people there are some of you that are first class materials but because of this wicked thing you were excellent in secondary school it's not that you are bad let me tell you those days will be restored because listen 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 i'm going to pray for you hallelujah when i count three inside and outside with all your heart shout i receive for some of you that will be the last thing you will remember something will happen to you that will change your life are you ready now please with all faith one two three Receive it now. Receive it. Take it. 
I restore you. Take it, 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 take it. Inside, inside, take. Receive it inside. Receive it inside. Outside, receive it. Receive it inside. Take it inside. Take it inside. At the back, inside. The angel of the Lord is touching people. At the back, outside here. At the back, take it. Take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Many of you will go back now and your academics will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 I want all of you to think about a cause that has been troubling you because I'm about to make it to bow now. Just listen, listen. I'm walking as God is just... Just think of it in your mind just once and bring it under the Lordship of Christ because I'm about to open, I'm about to tell it to open up for you. Are you ready? It's already happening to this sister. Now listen. Every department, every faculty in Amadubello University, that course that is threatening you right now, when I shall bow, many of you feel as if your head will open up. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus, bow! 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 In the name of Jesus, bow! Bow! In faculty of medicine, bow! Faculty of engineering, bow! Environmental design, bow! Education, bow! Social sciences bow. Sciences bow. All the faculties in Congo bow. Every other faculty bow. Anyone with a missing script. Problem of missing script. I stand tonight under this unction. And I command, wherever your paper is, where, except you didn't write that exam, wherever your paper is, just as the donkey of Kish was found, I command that paper to be found now. Yeah. Hallelujah. For all those whose assessments have been bad, listen, for this exam, for all those whose assessment have been bowed, have been, uh, are bad, in the name of Jesus, I release makeup test, makeup assignment, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord touch the hearts of the lecturers, no matter how hard they are. Hallelujah. All of you shout, I will excel. Say it one more time. I will excel. I will excel. Say excellence is my portion. Is my portion. Say, I Say I refuse failure. Say I refuse failure. I refuse failure. I take you from pass. From third class. I take you into. Some of you are, are trusting. Let me tell you. Any class you need to step up. I step you up right now. Yeah. I know some of you are doubting. Do not doubt the creative power of God's word. It created the heavens and earth. I said I step you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all those. Whether you or your loved one. They've been writing jam after jam. Wayek after wayek. You are looking for papers, it has refused to come. If God be God, if there is a God in this place, listen, those of you who are about to, whether jam, whether DE, you have papers that you need to make up. I stand as a servant of God. I give you the paper you are looking for. Yeah. 
those writing jam i prophesy write your last jam in the name of jesus those writing whether wayek or whatever to make up and there are some of you who are about graduating but the papers you have are causing trouble and right now you already have problem at the senate mercy 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 you must graduate you must graduate let something be done in your life that has not been done in this school god is visiting people thank you jesus god is opening people's files i tell you god is visiting people don't stand there doubting god will bless others and leave you hallelujah hallelujah everything called mental blockage or exam fever all this nonsense that comes on people you will read and even do tutorial for others in the name of jesus that spirit that makes you to forget things in the exam hall that you will only remember after you finish right right now i cast that spirit in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus you cannot read like a slave i forbid you from reading like a slave in the mighty name of jesus i tell you god is visiting people in a mighty way this night god is visiting people in a mighty way hallelujah in your academics i don't care how bad it has been i don't care what has happened from today step into that that dream you saw that your your results has never looked like it you have been seeing it enter the reality of it many of you have dreams you see four points but you write exam and see one point i cost that devil in the name of jesus ah yeah 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 i tell you god is visiting people hallelujah now please everybody who is sick you came here with any kind of disease i'm about to rebuke it right now please we don't have time our time is fast spent but God is going to visit inside. Are you still with me? Are you still with me inside? Now those outside here. I want, I want to pray. Everybody lay your hands anywhere is hurting. If it's a part of your body you cannot lay your hands on. Lay your hands on your chest. Whether fibroids. Whether growths. Whether cancer. Whether blindness. Whether deafness. Whether lameness. Whether Whatever it is, I don't care. If it followed you here, it made a mistake because it's going to leave you right now. Are you listening to me? Some of you, what you call sickness is actually oppression. Because I see that there are many ladies with all kinds of sicknesses. People think you are careless, you are not. That devil will leave you. Hallelujah. Some of you have HIV. It's not like you slept around. You too, you don't know how it came. Some of you have all kinds of cancerous growths. There are people they've told you you, you cannot. I, I, after I finish this, I'm going to specially pray for barren people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, listen. All of you inside, lift your hands. Lift your hands for that healing. I'm going to count three and the power of God will begin to come on sick people. Just those inside. Those inside. Ha hallelujah. The angels of God are moving inside. I see them. At the count of three inside. I tell you, many sicknesses will disappear right now. The moment I count three, just take that hand and lay it where it's hurting and start receiving your miracle. Are you ready? One, two, three. Receive right now. Take it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now lay your hands there. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Many of you are feeling like electricity. It's the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit is going through you begin to do what you couldn't do before those outside now lay your hands there are you ready to receive that devil will not follow you now in the name of jesus those outside here receive receive your healing receive your healing growth disappear 
terminal diseases go asthma go asthma go every deaf ear be open now every blind eyes be open if you're here and one leg is shorter than the other let the other one grow out now to equal sizes in the name of jesus every lady problem every woman problem irregular menstruation ends now 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 the fire of god is burning i tell you the fire of god is burning every lump in the breast disappears now disappears now disappears now every growth in any part of your body every growth i cause that growth to its root right now in the name of jesus i cause that growth to its root right now in the name of jesus thank you jesus any pain in any area of your body i rebuke it any trace of mental disorder whether for you or for your loved ones wherever they are and if you are here let the power of god touch you now let the fire of god touch you now let the fire of god touch you now shake it take up a reke teko to 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 baka ziko to yapata zekete let them go let them go out 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 every kind of mental problem whether it has manifested or not out 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 go go every curse every covenant thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah now any woman here or your sister or you who has been barring please connect now is the time we want to release miracle children right now i don't know whether they have been barren for 10 years 20 years 30 years the bible says and god opened the womb of anna listen i want you to stand you are a lady here you lived a promiscuous life and then you found out that okay some things happened maybe you lost your womb or something god is about to give you a new one right now i don't care what the problem is hallelujah praise god i want to curse barrenness and impotency low sperm count all this demonic infertility whatever i don't care if it has a name is going to answer this night are you ready everybody inside make sure you are with me hallelujah praise the lord whether for you or for your loved ones right now my father in the name that is above all names lift your hands i pray there are some of you listen some of you do not know that there are already projections of barrenness on you it's just that you have not married yet so don't say until you are married the devil is wicked god brought you to set you free you'll be surprised hallelujah inside and outside you're going to shout jesus and god is going to visit some people there are some of you god will visit you not for you but on behalf of other family members and i tell you you will see people take in are you listening to me do you believe this at the count of three i want you to shout jesus and you'll see what will happen are you ready thank you holy ghost at the count of three let your power move across inside and outside are you ready this will happen to many people because there is the curse of barrenness and standing for anybody at the count of three shout it with all your heart are you ready one Two, three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. 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 Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go. Inside. Inside. Fire. Fire is falling inside. Outside. Fire is falling. The curse of barrenness. Tokoto peketa. For your loved ones. Every barren woman receive children, receive children, receive children. Any impotency, whatever it is, low sperm count, infertility, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Jesus. Please stay with me. Sita kapala kushupete. Zimbato cross to palakato sepete. Jike prete kete lebundu kri. Hallelujah. I want to pray and prophesy. We want to talk on the issue of finances right now. Everybody stand up and take this very seriously. We apologize for the lightning. I believe that maybe some hitches here and there. We'll soon round up. Hallelujah. While this is happening, please let's have all the prayer requests outside here. Look at me. See, listen, look up. The secret of financial blessing is in your giving life. Are you listening to me? I don't care what you are doing. The secret, if you are not a giver, whatever you are seeing now is only a deceit. It won't last. Are you listening to me? I want to minister to you. How many of you know that God is not glorified in anybody's poverty? How many of you are tired of the situation of some of your family members? You know, you know what? I'm, some of your parents, one job here, two months, they've driven them away. This is a curse. The problem is that pastors like sugarcoating things. They just say, oh, it's well. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to challenge you. Everybody, please hold a seat. Bring out a seat. You know us in this place. If you don't believe, don't bring it out. I want to break the curse of poverty. Don't you think, please, I, I, if you have something, share with your neighbor. Please, please, please. Bring out a seed. Don't murmur and grumble. Just keep your seed back, please. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Look at me, look at me, sister. Look at me. Tell her to look at me. Look at me. Just tell her to look at me. Don't worry. Leave her. Look at me. Come out of her, devil of darkness. Ah, leave you alone. Praise God. See, while I was praying for this meeting, I saw this. Please listen. I saw a particular family. This is a revelation that the Lord showed me. And I saw them around the river, hallelujah, around the river with 500 naira. I don't know, I'm not going to mention them so that you don't think maybe I'm talking about a church or a ministry. We don't do that. But I saw some people, seeming men of God or whatever, around that they were trying to do something about financial prosperity. You see that? They killed chicken, they killed one other animal, I think goat or something. And they were invoking things on the person. And the Lord said, save this family. I saw it in the vision that the Lord showed me. There is nothing we will do here that God did not instruct. Hallelujah. Please, if you do not have a revelation of this, keep your money. You won't go to hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bring out something and connect it. I want to pray for you. You will lift it up. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, just lift it up. God, people are oppressed. Ah, people are oppressed. Listen, just lift it. Many of you, the fire will fall on you and your sacrifice. It will fall on you. See, it's poverty I want to attack. It's a spirit. Don't be mistaken about it. It's already happening to people. Everybody lift it. Please, make sure there is a seed. It will be your contact. Clash the symbol for me, please. At the clash of the symbol. Are you ready now? My father, I pray. It's your desire to prosper us. People have suffered. Families have suffered. Right now, spirit of poverty. Go. 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 Keep the offering up. Go. Go, 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 go. For your family, I burn that spirit of poverty. 
it's a cause leave God's people poverty causes laziness poverty causes lack of failure lift your seed is your sacrifice my God and my king if God be God I pray poverty be broken in the name of Jesus be broken jobless Go, 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 go. Hallelujah. To me, my people made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I command doors of uncommon unusual inexplainable and shall prosperity let it be open now for you and for your family that joblessness ends now mm, god is visiting families god is visiting families Any contract that has been revoked right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, I return it back to your loved ones. The curse of poverty be broken. Don't say I'm a student. Become rich in the name of Jesus. Become rich, blessed, wealthy. I program your spirit as surely as the Lord lives. God is visiting people. Twenty-one angels standing in this place. I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it, the whole of this place. The whole of this place. Lift your hands because God is about to visit you. Some of you, it's not just financial issues. God will join everything and visit you. As soon as I shout, receive it right from here down to this row this is what god is showing me the power of god will come in a strong way lift your hands all of you in the name of jesus at the count of two just two the wind will blow one two let it blow right now take it 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 don't wait till you fall. This has nothing to do with falling. It has nothing to do with falling. Receive by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting people. I don't know what the case is. But when I touch you, just know God is visiting you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The angels of the Lord are pointing people to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Aha. Now out of her. Come out. Come out of her. Shekotopa. Your time is up. You are a spirit. Out. Out now. Pain go. Come out. Supokotopekata likata. Dombretons kebanda kriata. Lord, visit them. Ushers, help me. Visit them. Please help them. Help them. Ushers, so that they don't fall down one another. Visit them. Visit them. Zidaba. God is visiting your mother right from the States. Oh, no, in UK. God is visiting her right now. Hallelujah. Madam. God is about to locate you. Stand up, please. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Come and stand here, please. 
I don't know you, but look at me. Three things the Lord is going to do for you. Number one, God is going to change your financial story in a way that will surprise you. Number two, who is sick? Somebody is seriously sick in your family. It's my husband I have. It's your husband. Because this is what I'm seeing. This is what is sugar? Sugar. Yes, yes. What is sugar? What is sugar? I'm hearing sugar. Diabetes. Diabetes. Yes. Do, do I know him? Have I met your husband? I'm hearing sugar. The Holy Spirit is telling me sugar. Diabetes. Is that correct? I'm, I'm BP. BP. I'm BP. Look at me. The third thing God is going to do. Are, are you building? Are you building? Madam, look at me. Are you? Yes. The Lord is saying that building will be completed. Yes. These three things. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because you have lifted this seed. Many of you. See. Father, visit her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Visit families by the power of the Holy Ghost. Visit families in the name of Jesus. See, I tell you, I'm not going to touch everybody. But if I do touch you, just know that God has visited you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It will bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Bring his sister for me, this one. Yes, come. Did I lay hands on you? It's time for God to visit you. Are you listening to me? Take it. It's over. Whatever it is, it's over. Right now. This fair lady, come, please. I don't know what is it. Come. Don't see. You people should not be angry at God. God, it, I must not touch you. Do you understand? You can see that we don't have all of the time. Eh? Look at me. I'm going to end a lot of things in your life. Seven things in total. One by one, God is going to show you. Five of them. You wrote, you wrote seven prayer points. Yes, sir. How many prayer points? Seven. Did you? seven. The Lord says seven things is visiting you and is bringing on. Was I there when you wrote it? Seven things you wrote. Seven things the Lord is visiting them. Lord, that is it. It ends right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Seven things the Lord is visiting you. Somebody wrote 13 prayer points. 13. 13, 13, you wrote 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13. Who is that? Come, you are the one. Come. Was I there when you were writing it? 13 prayer points. 13 prayer points. What did you write about your father? My family. Yes. Peace in my family. Peace in your family. There is fight. Was I there when you wrote it? What did you write about the issue of money? Last week when I went home, my sister was complaining that yes. Because I'm seeing the Lord is showing me your prayer points. That's why I'm reading it to you. Was I there? There's no money. You went home. Even transport to come back. Follow somebody. Somebody gave me a lift. This is, I, I, God said I should do it to prove to you that this is not just guesswork. My God, in the name of Jesus, locate this lady. Your situation ends once and for all. Regina. 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 Who is Regina? Regina, ah, no Regina, don't miss your miracle. You are Regina, you. Ah. No, this Regina is here. Oh. Your name is Regina. Where's your mother? She's in Lagos. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Ah. Pray for your mother, oh. huh? Because this is an attack I'm seeing on her, huh? This is an attack I'm seeing on her. Be careful. Don't let any lecturer talk stories and ask you to come and visit him in the night. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Does it make sense to you? Believe it. Huh? And then get into God with all your heart. Are you listening to me? I want to pray for you. This like a Jessica Christian attitude. Become a genuine Christian right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Grace to pray. Grace. Taiwo. God is visiting your mother. Just look at me. God is visiting your mother. Lord, visit her in the name of Jesus Christ. Right from here. Just as a point of contact, God is touching her in Lagos. Visit her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Visit her. This, this girl, eh? Bring this lady crying.
Lord, end this captivity in the name of Jesus. This lady's family do a lot of diabolic things. Are you listening to me? And they have put they have put things in this girl as a medium. This girl you are seeing, she's not the person you are seeing standing here. Hmm? This girl is very old. She's not as young as you are seeing, as in, I mean in the spirit realm. I'm seeing somebody that is up to 800 years old. Hallelujah. Are you seeing, look at, look at this. Bring her. This is what is wrong. They, they invoke spirits of ancestors into this girl. Come and stand here. Because they did it in such a way. Listen, they did it in such a way. And this is the invocation that no matter how much you are a man of God, you will not see it. This is what they did. Look at, I've seen it. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Look at, this is why this cry is happening. They, they programmed it. I don't know how it is. Many men of God have attended to this lady. They didn't see it. I don't know why. Because as I'm standing now, I'm seeing a tree. This is a tree I'm seeing. A very tall tree. Keep quiet. This lady, you see, she doesn't even know if this lady gets angry, she can beat even five guys put together. Are you listening to me? She, 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 she will, I mean, beat you and put you on the ground that you will cry. Even her, right from a small age, she has been seeing this strange power. This is not normal. I need to rebuke that. Some of you are like that. You just think it's your family. You beat all your classmates in nursery school. Beat all your classmates. In, you are happy about it. Hallelujah. I have to set this girl free. I'm seeing rings on her legs, rings on her hands, huh? ring on her eyes, even on her eyes here. Yeah. What kind of nonsense is this rubbish thing? Hmm? Keep quiet. This noisy spirit. You will go out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Huh? Two of us won't be talking. You are going to leave. There is a legal access that is given to you. But the Bible says the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And listen, leave her. Please leave her. Don't hold her. Look at me. Listen. Behave yourself right now. I'm going to rebuke this some it will create a ripple effect on all our family members because they mentioned their names as they were killing chicken this is what i'm seeing one by one they will mention their names and kill chicken leave her leave her leave her leave her come back just leave her she will come back by herself this thing is more than 800 years this is what i'm telling you am i wasting your time Am I wasting your time? Leave her, leave her. When she's done, she'll come and stand here. These are demonic things. Don't be distracted by all this drama. Let's concentrate on what God is doing, please. Mama, come. Come and stand here. Your time of visitation has come. I don't know what you came here for. Eh? your time of what did you come here for you are barren is that yes sir you are barren how many years 13 years i'm seeing one and three mm -hmm. how many years 13 years 13 years you have been barren your 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 situation has come to an end <laughs> hallelujah lay your hands on your stomach what did the doctors tell you is in your stomach? Nothing. They will do scan, nothing. But you are feeling movement in your body. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. In the night when you are sleeping, it will be as if a man wants to sleep with you. Yes, sir. A man comes to sleep yes, and it has even affected your relationship. Yes, sir. Eh? You don't even have affection for him. Yes, yes. Do you know me? No. Have you ever seen me? No. Your time of freedom has come this night. 
Because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a stone. A stone inside your stomach. You used to have pain when you sleep. Sharp pain. This is a stone I'm seeing. Hmm? This thing is a demonic thing. Lay your hands. I open this womb right now. Let the womb take in. By the power of... Take it right now. All right, it's time for you to go. Now, in the name of Jesus, I challenge you, come and stand here. There's no time. See, demons can distract. If you waste time on them, they are going to distract you. Are you listening to me? All these things are distractions. Learn this. This is not just a place to receive. It's a place to learn. Many people focus. I'm not against all of but it's not necessary. We don't have all of this time. Are you listening to me? Come and stand here. Quickly come and stand here. It was finance, right? Okay. Let God solve somebody's problem right now. Listen. I release you into financial blessings. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes is going to come. Bishop Stan is going to come. They are going to speak prophecies into you. Hallelujah. I wish we had time. But as they speak, please receive. Hallelujah. They will speak and while I go up there. When they are done, we'll come and pray on your request. Can you wait a few more minutes? Can you wait a few minutes? Pastor Jackson. Okay. Please, ushers, just cast your offering. Cast your offering quickly. Ushers, all over. If there are no ushers, just be patient. Inside and outside. Please make sure you drop your money to only ushers. Hallelujah. Please lift up your hands. There's no time. Joining hands with Bishop and as we pray, whatever you desire, okay? Whatever giftings you've been trusting God to unlock in your life, whatever dimension of God you've been trusting God to push you into, as we pray corporately, the presence of God and the oil of God will be poured upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Even as you have declared through your servant, Lord, as we cast this seed, may it be an end to poverty and financial hardship in the name of Jesus. You cause doors to be opened for every family represented here in Jesus' name. We stand in agreement and rebuke devourer in the name of Jesus. Devourers in form of sickness, in form of accident, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. We set everyone free. Enter into your financial liberty in the name of Jesus. Marital liberty in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me invite the ministers as we pray on the request. If you've not written your request, please write it here quickly. I want to... After this, I'm going to be inviting Uneko and his wife who are going to be dedicating and praying for their child. Hallelujah. And any other woman with child here, you're going to come out with your child. We're going to pray and speak protection after I do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Please. Very quickly. Stretch your hands while you are seated. You don't need to stand up. Stretch your hands as we pray on this request. Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray that you visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, visit families. 
in the name of Jesus, grant every spiritual blessing that your people are asking for. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray that every prayer point here, Lord, is answered in the name of Jesus. We release the angels of God to bring answers and solutions to needs in the name of Jesus. Let breakthroughs come, academic blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for businesses. We ask that prayer points here about businesses, that the Lord will open up doors in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for healing. We release the healing of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring salvation into your family. The Lord visits your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord blesses you with peace joy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth refreshing comes from the presence of the lord refreshing comes from the presence of the lord in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every closed gate is open in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every dark cloud is rolled away in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father we thank you we give you praise we celebrate you in our lives in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah put your hands together for the lord Hallelujah. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. All the children, quickly, quickly. Please save time. We just have about five minutes or so and we're out of. Celebrate them as they come. If you know God will give you children. Please come and line up here quickly, quickly. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. All the earth will sing. Father, you reign, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me pray. Please, Uneku, come up with your wife. How many of you remember them? Worship team. Come on, celebrate your own. Technical, celebrate your own too. See, they are all seated together. Is that where they met? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch your hands towards them. This baby is a miracle baby. I tell you. I was there in the hospital. I didn't even know the baby was on the bed. I said, where is the baby? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray. Rebuke the hand of Satan. Do it as though you are praying for your own child. Rebuke the hands of Satan. This baby is blessed. Growing normally. Daddy and mommy are healthy. In the name of Jesus. We dedicate this child in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. This child will grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. We command this child to be an ambassador. We program his destiny to glorify Christ alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for peace in this house. This will only be the first child and not the only child. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan, can I invite you just to come and lay hands on these children? Hallelujah. As we lay hands, all three of us will lay hands. You just lay hands. I'll come back and lay hands on them. As we lay hands on the children, we rebuke the hands of Satan. We rebuke the hands of Satan. No, let me lay hands on them before they go. We are, we are doing it, all of us, please. Very quickly. These are instructions that God is giving. We are not just doing these things carelessly. Any child, any one child that has anything that is not of God, we cancel it right now. We cancel it right now. Eh? In the name of the Lord Jesus, may the Lord visit this child. Let his hearing be perfected. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See how wicked Satan can be. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These children are blessed. Where is he? Bring him. The boy ran away. Because this boy wants to kill himself. It's the spirit that wants to kill him. Where is he? I tell him to stand, but he went. You see what I told you, spirits? He ran away to where? Wherever he is right now, in the name that is above all names, may the Lord visit him. 
you will go back and you will come and testify. Hmm? I'm seeing the fire of God on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord visits him. You are standing on his behalf. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Uh -uh. Come out of this girl. Devil of darkness. May the Lord bless you. Madam, God is really visiting your family. May the Lord... Ah, you came out for yourself or for your child. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I prophesy upon your life. Please stand up, everybody. Be rounding up now. Every closed door in the name that is above all names, I open it right now. Every door of failure and disappointment in the mighty name of Jesus, let that door be open now. I pray right now. Any voice that is speaking against you and your destiny, I command those voices to be silenced right now. Whatever is stopping your spiritual development, whatever is stopping your passion for God, one leg in, one leg out, I pray, I release encounters to your life. Encounters with angels. Encounters of heaven. Visions and revelations. Dramatic encounters with Jesus Christ. I pray for the spirit of prayer. May it come upon you in a mighty way. Who is this? Oh, see the boy is back. Come. Look at me. How are you? The Lord will set you free. Huh? You love Jesus. Look at me, look at me. You love Jesus. Do you like what happens to your life? Huh? Are you tired of it? Look at me. Are you tired of it? Huh? You want to be free from it? Huh? Madam, it's not this boy that is doing these things. Are you listening to me? This is a suicidal spirit. Huh? This is demonic. Because this boy is destined to be great. Are you seeing? And this is why the devil wants to destroy him. Hmm? Look at me, my brother. Why did you go away? Okay. He doesn't even know why he left. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness. Your time in this boy's body is over. The fire of the Holy Ghost against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you right now. Who is Bulus? It's his uncle. Bulus is his uncle. Do, you, do I know Bulus? Where is he? Hold my hands. Father, I pray that the wickedness of men will not catch up with this boy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God and my King, I pray for a dramatic visitation. Look at me. Look at me. Go to church. Join a fellowship. Huh? These bad guys that are around you, they will destroy you. I cancel your appetite for them. They are, they are, trying, to, they are trying to introduce you into wheat and all of this nonsense. You will not have appetite for any of these things. Hmm? You will become an obedient and a respectful child. This hardened heart this night has been replaced with the heart of stone. Salvation comes to this family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rehila. Who is Rehila? Do you know anybody called Rehila? What is... I mean, well, I'm hearing the name Rehila. This is your daughter? Come. How are you, my dear? Hold my hands. See a mystery. I'm going to be praying for you. 
but is that your sister that is going hold, hold on don't tell me I, I don't want you to tell me hmm? don't tell me don't worry that's your sister dear I'm seeing light is leaving you and is entering I'm going to pray for you but the prayer is going to affect her hold my hands I set you free right now I set you free right now lose lose her from that chain be loose right now let the fire of the Holy Spirit There is deliverance going on in your family right now. I don't know why this is happening, but God is bringing you. Through. Thank you, Jesus. Brother, look at me. Please be a gentleman, okay? Be a gentleman. Love God. Be serious with your life. You are a healer. Okay. Well, you came out. Let me pray for you. The, the Lord is not giving me anything exactly. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Ah, you don't know. I'll just pray generally for you. Come. Is that okay? Lay your hands on your chest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I command favor to your life. I command favor. Favor. Favor is one blessing that the Lord has given us here. I release it into your life right now. Yeah. Whatever has been a challenge for you, may God speak it. Yeah. Listen, when God speaks over your situation, that's all it ends. If you are here, I didn't call your case, but you came with an expectation right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you at that point of your need. Yeah. Every habit here that is not of God, masturbation, pornography, all of these devilish things that are destroying people, I cast it out of your life forever. I cast it out of your life forever. It will not return again. I cast it out. I cast it out of your life. Every form of immorality that stops you from entering the dimension God wants to take you, I release grace upon you. To walk in genuine holiness and purity. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your parents and your loved ones. As God visits you here, may he visit them. As God visits you here, may he visit them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we step into the seventh month, may it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. What you have not accomplished from January to June, accomplish it in July. I command promotion. I command promotion. All of you in ministry, I pray that you will see a greater anointing in your ministries. I release greater fire in your fellowships, in your churches, in your ministries. Let devils be casted out. Let the sick be healed. Let sinners be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command increase and expansion for ministries here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you planning for marriage, I command whatever resource you need, I release it for you. Even if the man has not come, I bring him into your life. Even if the woman has not come, I bring her into your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, inside and outside, this is an opportunity for those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing, please. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle that can happen in this place is that you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You have seen the miracles and all of these things. But there are many of us that need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And right now, as we begin to clap, I'll count one to five. Praise God. Inside and outside, please give them space. Inside and outside. 
I want you to come before the Lord here. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you made a decision for Jesus once. You made a decision for Jesus once, but you found yourself derailing. Please come out and stand here in the name of Jesus. Please, leave your seat and come out. Appreciate them. They are coming. God bless you. Please rush, rush, run, run, run. Don't be afraid. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed inside and outside. God bless you as you come. They are coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Outside, make sure you don't stay back. Don't let any devil rob you of the greatest blessing. Keep coming, keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when I do this, Selena and my sister and their roommates, please you come and stand. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. All of you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, those of you in front. Thank you so much for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm saved. Jesus is Lord of my life. I denounce sin and Satan. From today, the Holy Spirit lives in me. I have eternal life and the gift of righteousness. And I will reign in this life. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I will never be the same again. My life is transformed. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.